my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Titas of Pageantry. And for this episode, I am going to be giving you my non-committal picks for Binibini Pilipinas 2022. You wouldn't want to miss this because this episode will definitely help you complete your list. So please make sure you stick around. Please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant picks. Hey guys, I hope that you're doing okay. I am really excited to bring this episode to you because in a few days we will have our new queens for Binibini Pilipinas. And this has been a long journey. This stretched on for what, almost four months? We got to know the girls. I myself have had several um, instances where I got to meet them, where I got to really talk to them. So this edition of Binibini Pilipinas is pretty special because we have you know, very close relationships with some of these girls. Now, I know a lot of you have been waiting for that primer episode. I wasn't able to do a live session on that. And yes, I have my cats all around. I hope you don't mind. Anyway, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, but yes, I know that a lot of you have been waiting for the primer episode and my thoughts on it. But I decided to breeze through it, skip the primer, and talk about our non-committal picks. So just to give you a little bit of a background, background. Um, Atitas of pageantry, we don't really do a hot picks. Um, the reason for this is because we don't have the balls to call just one specific winner for a specific title. We feel the need to expound. We feel the need to really talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the candidates who we are considering for each of the titles. And this has become a tradition. So what we do is that we round, um, we round up several girls who we seem um, who we see as fit for the title and then we rationalize and we explain why they're good choices for these titles. And you know what? Over the years, we've had out-of-the-box uh, picks who eventually would get a crown. So we've had a pretty good... Um, track record in trying to figure out who will win um, these titles. So let's see. Let's see if we're on the same page. I just feel like if your lists are made and um, if you already have someone you're supporting, then, you know, I might just shake things up for you. So all of the major competitions or pre-pageant activities at Binibini Pilipinas, we have finally come up with our non-committal picks. So I'm going to start first with uh, the two titles that we already won last year. It's going to be a little difficult to do a back-to-back, -back, but we still have to adhere to our standards and send them really amazing girls um, to succeed the queens that we sent them from last year. So I'm going to start with Miss Globe for you. Now, um, if you have been following me on this channel, I did have an episode some months back on what Miss Globe is looking for. Like, I do know that every once in a while they would break the mold, but based on our performance at Miss Globe, and ever since uh, Binibini Pilipinas uh, acquired this franchise, We've had a really good run with Miss Globe. For the longest time, we have been sending them our most statuous girls, and we've been doing quite well. And, you know, even in 2020, when we sent Rowie Lucero, she wasn't under BPCI when she was sent to uh, Miss Globe. She also finished Fort Runner Up, so we've had a continuous streak of placements at Miss Globe. So it has been a pretty good run for them. So... Maureen Montaigne is, of course, the reigning Miss Globe uh, 2021, and it's going to be a little difficult to top that physical beauty. So I have four choices for you and one out-of-the-box choice. So for my first pick, I am going to give this to Diana Mackey. Now, admittedly, Diana Mackey did not really do a lot, did not really stand out this whole time of the competition. I think the only time we went really nuts for her was when she signed up at Bini Bini and she was in that beautiful golden yellow dress. But right after that, she just cruised along. She didn't really have a lot of fireworks or a lot of um, like super positive reviews for all of her performances but she's always there because that physical beauty is undeniable the features are a little strong but if these competitions will continue to be held in a 
Eastern Europe, this type of beauty definitely will hold. Um, I also threw in the likes of Josh Dimakulangan because apart from being statuesque herself, I feel that Josh is really polished. If you want to send her to a competition as far as Eastern Europe, I feel that she's going to be very self-reliant. I feel that she's also going to inject a certain element of class and elegance in that competition. I will also throw in the likes of Cyril Koyumo, and if you notice, I've been throwing in a lot of our statuesque girls in this title only because I know that this is what is expected of us when we join Miss Globe. Rounding up my list for considerations for Miss Globe, I'm going to add in Gabi Bashano because this face is undeniable and this could hold head to head with, you know, the photos that um, Maureen Montaigne would publish. I think that she's going to be well received because this face definitely is undeniable. But it might interest you to find out what my out of the box Miss Globe winner would be. And I am actually thinking of Harley Nicole Budol. Now I know you have locked in on her for your Miss Grand International list. I definitely get this, but hear me out. When Maureen Montaigne competed last year, the morning of the competition, one of the key members of Miss Globe, Miss Pilar, she went on live and then she gave us a list of what they were looking for at Miss Globe. And one of the key things that we remembered was that they were looking for an influencer type. And if you remember, Maureen at that time was pretty popular as a model, as a beauty queen, but her social media following wasn't as large. It was only around 30, 60,000. So when we heard about this, when we heard that they needed an influencer type, we went on a full gear bayanihan. We did everything that we could to raise Maureen's following from a mere 60,000 to more than 100,000 with just a few hours in between. And we had the likes of celebrities and um, high profile beauty passion personalities helping us out to do that. Meaning to say, if they're looking for an influencer type with a huge following, why not go for Harleen Boodle? She ticks all of the boxes and wouldn't it be fun to see her wearing the Miss Globe uniform? I think she's going to rock it and I think that in terms of movements, in terms of presenting herself, she can go head to head with uh, the beauty queens that we are all very used to. So what do you think of the Miss Globe list? Now I'd like to move on to Miss Intercontinental. Now this one is a little wobbly, but for the longest time, whenever we would talk about Miss Intercontinental, we always say that it's a little difficult to figure out what they want. Now in one of the interviews from a few years back, I don't know who it was, I just remember hearing that what they're looking for is someone who is deemed the most beautiful out of all the continents. And you know, it makes sense. Now, I know you will throw in the incident of 2014 and then tell me, Tita, what about the face value from 2014? In fairness to her, she has gone a long way. Patraporn, good luck to you. I know that you're one of the strongest contenders at Miss Universe Thailand, but I'm just saying that back in 2014, these theories were all put to the test when she won. But moving forward, I think that in the succeeding years, they've continued on with the peg looking for that really beautiful face. So when I was having a little bit of a conversation with Tita B last night, we were thinking who would be good fit for um, Miss Intercontinental. They changed the peg a little bit. Of course, they crowned Cindy Obineta of the Philippines as the reigning Miss Intercontinental 2021. And we all knew that when she was crowned at... Um, Miss Intercontinental, she brought along a certain amount of class, a certain amount of self-assurance. She was happy, but she absolutely aced Q&A. So this definitely rocked our um, perception of Miss Intercontinental because for the longest time, we thought that with Miss Intercontinental was all about face, not so much about communication skills, not so much about Q&A skills. So right now, maybe we can incorporate both. According to Tita B, the term was nakakasilaw na ganda. So we picked beautiful, beautiful uh, faces for you with substance, of course. So my number one pick for Miss Intercontinental, because I love throwing you curveballs, I am going to give this to Karen Laurie Mendoza. 
Yes, I know a lot of you have locked in Karen Laurie as your Miss International, but hear me out on this. If it is a question of nakakabulag o nakakasilaw ng ganda, why wouldn't we put Karen Laurie there? If we are a little unsure of how she will perform at Q&A, then Intercontinental might just be a great avenue for her. Think about it. Our other picks for Miss Intercontinental, I would like to see Gabby Bashana there because, yes, again, if it has something to do with talks on nakakasilaw or nakakabulag na ganda, I think Gabby Bashana would definitely fit the bill. Plus, she is long, she is lean, definitely has a little bit of Cindy Obineta when it comes to body proportion. So, yeah, she could be a really good fit. I am also going to throw in a Chelsea Fernandez only because this competition is usually held in Egypt and when it comes to beauty standards I would love for us to send someone who is just so undeniably facially beautiful and I think that Chelsea Fernandez could really give them a show just by appearing as Chelsea Fernandez but if you ask me if you probably ask Tita B despite the limitations of height despite all these talks of not being able to stand out because the height isn't quite as competitive, I am honestly rooting for Stacey Gabriel only because also in Pinipining Pilipinas, they leave a crown or a title or two for someone who isn't really considered heavy favorite. So we might have a dark horse, we might have a sleeper come in, why not Stacey Gabriel? She has been very consistent from day one. She has been opening the show, setting the tone, doing everything right. But more than anything else, she has personality. The voice is butter. I think that she can rally the crowd in Egypt. And this face is some type of face that could be immortalized on these ancient Egyptian walls. I mean, this face, even in that petite frame, can hold looks, can hold makeup. It's an impressive face, impressive uh, facial structure. So if you add in everything and, you know, maybe turn a blind eye on the height, I guess we have someone really strong if we look into Stacey Gabriel. You have to understand, guys, our first Miss Intercontinental was Karen Gallman, and she wasn't the tallest either, but facially speaking, she was nakakasilaw, nakakabulag. So there you have it. But I would like to uh, give you a little bit of something-something from my out-of-the-box choice and I actually got this idea from one of the commenters when I was doing my live. Uh, please stand up <laughs> if you know who you are but um, this person planted a seed in my brain and uh, allowed me to consider yes Graciela Lehman indeed for Miss Intercontinental. I know a lot of you will say but Tita she's from MGI because of that body. Yes I will factor that in but Beauty-wise, that's already quite striking as well. She had her full transformation. I think that everything is falling into place. She can definitely play with styling. Um, but what made me consider her for Miss Intercontinental was that she has strong communication skills. And if they're going to pattern their winners against Cindy Obineta, Graciela Lehman would be a great follow-up. So there. Next, I'd like to move on to Miss Grand International because even if we have a love-hate relationship with this uh, title, as Filipinos, we don't want to send someone sloppy. We don't want to send someone haphazard. I mean, we have an idea of sending Harleen Boodle there, yes, but there are still... Um, expectations for Harleen and so far I think she's been doing quite well let me get to that later on I'm just saying that Miss Grand International remains to be popular even if it's polarizing because it does have merits it's really very glossy and it's a great platform it's a great avenue for the creatives to really play around to really push the envelope so I wouldn't be surprised if there are girls who are really also gunning for this because it is a fun show and there's always that thinking that maybe if a Filipino wins maybe if a Filipino does well it would elevate the brand we don't know but 
my first pick for this. I have been very vocal about this since day one. I have been asking you guys to consider her even if you feel like she's for some uh, higher pageant. But because she has a, at Binibining Pilipinas and I'm looking at her, I feel like she fits the peg. This is, of course, my first pick for Roberta Tomondong. Um, I've been saying this for quite some time. She does remind me of Valentina Figuera, someone who's young, someone who's really vibrant, someone who's tall, someone who has the amazing physique to take the ramp at Miss Grand International and really show us the same vibrance, the same energy as what Samantha Bernardo showed us. And I think that this could be accomplished by Roan. Um, of course, uh, we have so many contenders for Miss Grand International. I'd like to add in CJ Opiaza. Uh, how can you not consider her after her press presentation performance. And um, I like that she's on the Morena side. I like also that she has that very Filipino vibe. She's very sure of herself. And she doesn't really um, mind whether she's competing with some of the most uh, popular candidates in Philippine pageantry. She's just doing her own thing. Um, Number three, uh, Harleen Budol's name has been attached to Miss Grand International since the very first day she signed up for Binibining Pilipinas. Everyone around her has been vocal about this. Her team has been vocal about this. Even she has given hints of you know, preparing herself for a title um, like Miss Grand International. Now, she is, of course, really very appealing. If we're going to look into the dynamics of Miss Grand International, they want someone who's just physically a fit at Miss Grand International. Harleen ticks those boxes. She had the face transformed and fixed. Her body is banging. She's 5'9". Um, she doesn't really have to wow the crowd with her communication skills or her English abilities. She just has to be herself. But what's more appealing is just the sheer number of followers and reach that she can bring to the table. On Instagram alone, she has more than 500,000 followers. So that's really very appealing if you're talking about someone like Mr. Nawat. And uh, yeah, um, my number fourth uh, pick for Miss Grand International, because why not? Uh, why not have a Cyril Payumo infiltrate this competition? She's kind of classy, I know, but with just the right amount of training, you could break her body, you could make her do things that she could deliver because she is a pageant girl. She's very tall, beautiful face, and I think that this is something that she could professionally accomplish for us. Now, for my out-of-the-box uh, pick, actually, physically speaking, she's not so out-of-the-box. She has the curves, the physique, and the movements, of course, the face, and the youth. I'm talking about Chelsea Fernandez. I think that she is also one of a really, really good consideration. I have been looking the other way around because Chelsea has alabaster skin. She does have that doll-like quality to her. She does have that old Hollywood glamour to her. Um, but we are a little afraid of calling it and we are a little afraid for really pushing for a Chelsea Fernandez because the vibe has um, a very similar vibe to that of Eva Patalinhog and we all know that um, Eva's type of beauty did not resonate as well at MGI so I think a lot of us are being a little mum with trying to push Chelsea for MGI but now that we're here not that now that we're talking about it um, because she is a really good fit for a lot of these pageants being as young as she is and being as accomplished as she is in pageantry then yes she might be someone uh, to consider for Miss Grand International. Now, um, before I move on to the top plum, which is Miss International, I'd also like to give you a few possible spoilers. Now, I say this because I don't actually know where to classify them. They might surface in the semifinals, or they might even get the chance to really push forward and um, clinch one of these titles. But I am looking at the types of Fatima Bison. I think that she is very consistent and the face and physique is also quite undeniable. Anna Valencia, I have heard good things about how she is received from the inside. It seems that a lot of um, 
folks from the inside favor her. She's been doing well. She's a pageant newbie. But, you know, in terms of really considering her for a pageant, let's say, at Miss International, because Hannah will be competing this year, we might need someone who is young enough to endure one more year or at least a few more months of training. So Anna Valencia might actually be a good fit. Uh, because of her uh, primer... Um, performance and that beautiful face beautiful eyes and you know something new that we learned we did not get to learn this up until a few days ago that she was a marine biologist and that she is pushing for stem i'm talking about joanna day it might be a good time to really recognize her prowess in this competition lala vincent has been quite underrated for me i have mentioned her a few times but maybe not strong enough to really give her a platform for people to really talk about her but i have been hearing murmurs which means that people are really considering her merits so it might be a good time to really check out lala and for lala to really push herself come finals jasmine all my for us is a sentimental favorite although i haven't really um seen her at any of the competitions that matter. I haven't really seen her really hold on and really wow the crowd. I'm hoping that this quiet energy will have a breakout come finals. And I also want to um, add in for spoilers and Anna DeMessa. She is headlining this new camp called TCI. She is, of course, a pageant veteran. She's been doing quite well. Um, and I know it's a little difficult right now with so many strong ladies in the batch, but I think Anna is also worth considering. I'm sorry, Anne de Messa is also worth considering. Now, for Miss International, I have four choices for you. I think leading the pack, uh, this one is very obvious. Miss International, by the way, changed their hashtag. So they're looking for someone elegant. And, you know, when they release this, when they publish the new hashtag, one person came to our mind, and this was someone that we knew was just so facially superior. We knew could style herself. We knew had an innate sense of style and had a little bit of her own brand of elegance and grace. I am, of course, talking about the beautiful Karen Laurie Mendoza. Now, if this goes well for her, if you know she gets the right answers, sorry, the right questions, and she gets to answer this flawlessly, I think that this crown is her. Um, I'm also adding in Yana Adwana. She's very young. I know that she can be considered in the other pageants, but based on that alabaster skin, beautiful curves that isn't really screaming, sexy, but is it hoochie? She might be someone you could consider for Miss International. And mind you, her calm skills, pretty good as well. Chelsea Fernandez is also being considered for Miss International. The creamy, white skin, doll-like features with a hint of class, with a hint of sexy. I mean, these ladies could be a little doll-like the way we perceive Miss International, but they could go the route of Edimar Martinez and be a little sexy. So I think Chelsea could really fit the bill. But now that we're talking about this, now that we are at the tail end of the competition, I think all eyes are definitely on Nicole Borromeo. She has been employing this blitzkrieg type of campaign ever since her return after her absence at the press presentation. She has not stopped. On social media, she's always there in lists. She would always surface. So there's definitely something about Nicole Borromeo. But I think what cemented her position was her performance at the primer. She knows how to speak, of course. She knows how to organize her thoughts. And she knows how to clip them accordingly. So these are all really very good traits. And again, the face is undeniable. She is a mix of mestiza with a little bit of oriental. And, you know, I think that these are just really great representations of a modern Filipina. But again, for our out-of-the-box uh, pick for Miss International, I'm going to give this to Cyril Payumo. Cyril, for me, has earned her dues. I would feel pretty bad if she doesn't clinch one of the crowns, I guess, because there's frequency in the way I've been dropping her name, which means that 
she's a really good fit at any of these titles. Um, if she is qualified, I think that she would be great at each of the titles. Same with Chelsea as well. Um, unlike the others who are seemingly very, very uh, specific. So, there you have it, guys. I have given you choices and alternates. Maybe you can start considering uh, some of the ladies that you've locked into for certain titles. Maybe you can consider them for other titles as well. And yeah, this ends our conversation on Bini Bini Filipinas. I will get to see you at the finals. I'm going to try and do a little bit of live before the show. And I know that the show will start really very late, which means that it will end late. But if I have an audience, I might go on a bit of live for you as well. So I will see you. Um, I won't have any contents uh, lined up for you, but I will see you at the finals. For now, go make your lists. Bye, guys.